Well, it has arrived. And by it, I'm not referring to the clown it. I'm of course referring to it. <laughs> the ZWO AM3 harmonic drive mount. The widely anticipated smaller, younger version or sibling of the AM5 harmonic drive mount. I'm Sarah Matthews, and in this video, we're going to be unraveling the secrets and mysteries that lie within these cardboard walls. Or in other words, we're just going to be doing a good old-fashioned unboxing of the AM3. So grab a snack and let's dive in. A quick shout out is in order to ZWO for letting us take a look at the AM3 today. And so if you're familiar with ZWO's first harmonic drive mount, the AM5, we're going to go through the similarities and differences of the AM5 and the AM3 throughout this video. So to start, the AM3, just like the AM5, uses the same strain wave gear operation, which does allow both the AM3 and the AM5 to be used without needing to balance either of the axes of the mounts. This is, of course, quite different than what we're used to seeing in our more traditional German equatorial mounts where we do need to balance our payload in both the right ascension and declination axes. The harmonic drive mechanical design does allow the AM3 to carry a lot more weight compared to the actual physical size of the AM3, which is similar to what we see with the AM5, and it's what makes these mounts, as well as just harmonic mounts in general, a lot smaller and therefore more portable and far more back friendly. <laughs> um, if you've ever had the opportunity of setting up and tearing down a traditional German equatorial mount, then you know what I'm talking about here. They are really beefy. Another aspect about harmonic drive mounts like the AM3 is that you don't need to use a counterweight with them. This is obviously much different than what we see with our traditional German equatorial mounts where sometimes you might need to use more than one uh, counterweight, sometimes you might need to use two or three just to make sure that the payload is balanced in all the axes. You can use a counterweight with the AM3 or the AM5 to increase the payload capacity of your mount. So if you wanted to use heavier equipment up to a certain point, but the counterweight in these instances isn't necessarily for balancing the axes like you would with a traditional German equatorial mount. The counterweight with an AM3 or an AM5 is more so just to make sure that they don't fall over. So I guess the next order of business is opening this box up. So box cutter and we'll do the whole thing. All right. So this is the box that it comes in. It's very similar to the AM5's box, just really nice feeling to it, texture. And of course a handle on here. So let's open this up as well. And just And what do you know? We have a black container there, and we also have some documentation in this sleeve right here. So the first item that we have in here is the AM3 periodic error test report. Now this test report comes with each of the mounts, both the AM3 and for the AM5. I do go over how ZWO tests their mounts in greater detail in my AM5 review, and I go through the report there if you're interested in learning more about it. And we also have the ZWO Harmonic Mount AM3 Quick Guide, which we will go over in greater detail later on. <sighs> okay, so let's take this black case out, but I'm actually gonna move this box out of the way. Don't poke my eyes out with these flaps. So this is the AM3 carrying case. It has a handlebar on the top here with ZWO engraved in it. And then we have two latches that we would use to open and close the carrying case with. And then on the front, there is some text. It's 3D printed, it looks like, which I've never seen before. And it appears to say ZWO AM3, but to you, the viewer, it looks upside down and backwards. However, if you were to look at it like this in this orientation like I am, it would appear in the correct orientation. So like this. 
And then again, we have those clutches here or clamps, and then we use that to open it up and it opens up like a briefcase. So this is the AM5 carrying case. We have a handlebar, just like we do with the AM3 uh, carrying case, but we have zippers instead of the latches like we have here on the AM3. And then we also have a different material uh, as far as the covering. There is a cloth material covering where there is no cloth material covering on the AM3 carrying case. And then of course, the design on the AM5 is different than the AM3. So just to kind of give you a size comparison as well and overall aesthetic differences. So I'm really curious to see how much this thing weighs with everything inside of it. So I have my handy dandy scale right here. So let's weigh it. So it says 4,751 grams, which is about 10.5 pounds. So that's pretty cool that everything fits nicely in here and it only weighs 10 pounds or so. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. All right, where should we start first? All right, let's start with this dude. So, We have, this is of course an Allen wrench or a hex wrench, depending on whatever terminology that you prefer to use when using this or acknowledging its existence. And you would use this to mount the head plate to the bottom of an AM3 um, to a tripod like the TC40 carbon fiber tripod from ZWO. All right, what next? Oh, let's do this. We have a cable. It looks like a USB 2.0 cable. This is going to be for connecting your ASI Air or PC to the AM3 to control it. Being able to control your AM3 either through an ASI Air or through a PC is just one way of controlling an AM3 or an AM5. So, all right, what is next? Ooh, another cable. This cable is not for a landline telephone, although it looks strangely reminiscent of one, but this is actually going to be for your hand controller. So I will put that right here for now. And I suppose in that logical fashion, we should then address the hand controller. So we have the hand controller right here, has its own little lanyard, and it looks like the same size as the AM5's hand controller. It's also Wi-Fi enabled to connect lay cable, the cable to the uh, hand controller. You just insert it into the bottom and you would put this end into the front of the AM3, similar to how you would with the AM5. So ZWO describes this hand controller to have a rocker style user interface or user interaction. It has a joystick and some other features as well. And using the hand controller is just another way to be able to control the AM3, similar to the AM5. So some use cases for the hand controller would be for visually aligning your telescope mount to something like the moon or a planet after you have performed a go-to, but you could also do it without performing go-to. And if you wanted to take sky flats in the morning after your imaging session, or if you wanted to just take flats with a light panel after your imaging session is done and the ASA error is off or your PC is shut down, you could use this to control your mount. That's because the mount here, just like the AM5, does not have manual clutches. And by that, I mean the RA and deck clutches. So you would have to um, move those with either this or an ASA error or PC or the ASI mount app. That is the third way to control an AM3 or an AM5 and that is a separate application. So that's that. All right, so we have one item left in here and I'm pretty sure you know what that is. It is of course the AM3. Let's take this out. Okay. All right, so here we have the AM3. It has the same red coloring as the AM5 and it says AM3 right there. And it also has the same plate or front plate as the AM5, so that same design. This does weigh 3.9 kilograms in comparison to the AM5, which weighs five kilograms. 
So as you can see, I have the AM3 mounted here. However, I do not have it directly mounted to the TC40 tripod. This is because I have mounted it instead to the PE200 pure extension and then mounted the PE200 pure extension to the tripod. This is only for filming purposes that I did this. Otherwise, trying to fit all of us in the same field of view without the pure extension is just really awkward. So anyways, we're gonna go over the quick start guide here. I have installed the head plate and I have used the Allen wrench that it came with. And then on the bottom of the AM3, there were three M6 screws. I unscrewed those and then I added the head plate from the tripod that I have and then everything locks into place. So we've essentially gone from one to three in about a couple of seconds. <laughs> Now moving on to number four from the quick start guide, controlling your AM3 with the hand controller. I'm going to grab that really quick, going to connect it. And then I would take this end and put it in the hand controller port. This is again, just one way that you can control the AM3. You can also control the AM3 via USB 2.0. And then I have my ASI air here. I would just plug in the 2.0 here. And that would be the same if you were going to plug this into a laptop, um, you would just put it into the USB slot. And then for the mobile app, the ASI mount app, you can also control the AM3. Now moving on to number five, next we would adjust the latitude and azimuth scale. The AM3, just like the AM5, has two gears, which gives you the option to adjust the latitude scale. In gear one, the latitude range is from zero to 60 degrees, and then you can switch to gear two for higher latitudes from 60 degrees to 90 degrees. This is really nice if you do plan on using the AM3 at higher latitudes. Moving right along to number six here in the quick start guide, the AM3, just like the AM5, can be used in two different modes. In equatorial mode or alt azimuth mode. The default is equatorial mode and equatorial mode would be used for taking long exposure photos for astrophotography. The alt azimuth mode would be used for visual astronomy. This status light here will tell you if you are in equatorial mode or in alt azimuth mode and you can use the mount app to change between the two. Speaking of the ASI mount app, the AM3, unlike the AM5, can actually be connected wirelessly via Bluetooth. There is Bluetooth embedded into the AM3, so you could just connect to the AM3 wirelessly through the ASI mount app. Now, as far as power, the AM3 has a power button over here. Now, on the other side of the AM3 power button, we do not have a 12V out like we do with the AM5, so you're gonna need to take that into consideration when powering other accessories, but for overall power in here on the front of the mount, we have a 12V 5 amp in port. Also keep in mind that the operating temperature of the AM3 is negative 15 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Now on the bottom here, we have a threaded cap. This is for the use of a counterweight shaft. The interface thread of the counterweight shaft is M12 and you would only wanna use a counterweight shaft up to 25 centimeters long. And as far as adding a counterweight, you can add a counterweight that weighs up to five kilograms. Now using a counterweight will increase the load capacity of the AM3 from eight kilograms all the way up to 13 kilograms. As for the AM5, it can support a payload without a counterweight up to 13 kilograms. And with the addition of a counterweight bar and counterweight, you can increase the payload capacity of the AM5 up to 20 kilograms. And as for mounting your OTA, the AM3 has a dovetail that can accommodate both Lozmandy and Vixen style dovetails, which is similar to the AM5. So that about covers everything for this video. If you did like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you wanna support this channel further, please consider becoming a patron over on my Patreon page. And until the next video, I hope everybody here has clear skies.